Hello, my name is Dr. John Daly. I'm the Chief Medical Officer of COLA. In late November 2017, the FDA published an alert that elevated levels of the water-soluble vitamin biotin, also known as vitamin B7, vitamin H, and coenzyme R, can significantly interfere with certain immunoassays that rely on biotin technology. That is, the reagents performing the analyses actually contain biotin molecules as an essential component of the assay. Biotin is an over-the-counter supplement and it is used for its purported effects in strengthening hair, skin, and nails. The dose recommended by the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine's Food and Nutrition Board for a healthy individual is 30 micrograms per day. A typical biotin supplement, on the other hand, contains 5,000 to 10,000 micrograms of biotin, and these high dosages can lead to interference with immunoassays that rely on biotin-containing reagents. Immunoassays utilizing biotin as a component of the reagent are of two types. Both type of reagents have the ability to bond with specific serum proteins, which can then be measured. Because there are two different types of biotin containing reagents used in immunoassays, some of the biotin containing reagents might give an erroneously elevated result for a given analyte, and the other method, using a different type of biotin containing reagent, might give a falsely low result on the same sample. For example, a T3 measurement with biotin elevated in the patient's serum from the biotin supplement might give an elevated T3 result using one type of reagent, and the same reagent could give a low T3 level using the second biotin reagent-dependent method. A third method for testing the exact same sample using a non-biotin-dependent method will give the correct result even in the face of the elevated serum exogenous biotin from the supplement the patient has been ingesting. Among the assays in which elevated serum biotin can interfere with results are troponin, TSH, T3, T4, parathyroid hormone, estradiol, PSA, ferritin, and several others. The results of thyroid testing assays provide a good example of how elevated serum biotin from an ingested supplement can lead to erroneous results and at the same time, using technology not relying on biotin reagents can lead to a tremendous amount of confusion. If a patient with an elevated serum biotin has a falsely low TSH and also a markedly elevated free T4 and total T3, results occurring because the serum biotin is affecting the test performance of all three analytes, an erroneous diagnosis of Graves' disease could readily be made. However, if the patient does not appear to clinically have Graves' disease, thought must be given to potential interference by elevated serum biotin, and the patient needs to be questioned about the use of biotin supplement ingestion, and also examination of the immunoassay technology being used by the laboratory to evaluate the total situation. In another situation, the, T the TSH may be abnormally low, suggesting Graves' disease, and the other thyroid hormone assays may be normal, leading to confusion as to the true clinical situation. This type problem can occur because the TSH has used a biotin technology to, contain, to obtain the TSH levels, but the laboratory is using a non-biotin-dependent assay to obtain the other thyroid hormone results. 
Moral of my story, in immunoassay dependent testing, especially with endocrine tests, if the laboratory results do not fit the clinical picture, or if the laboratory results are contradictory and confusing, think exogenous biotin. Inquire from the patient if they are consuming biotin supplements and review the actual laboratory methodology used in each of the assays in question to, to determine if they are biotin-dependent assays. Thank you for your attention.